We have our What's Up at ESD Environmental Services Division that we have a rain barrel sale going on, and the rain barrel can also work as a laptop holder. <laughs> <laughs> but our rain barrel, so there's little slips on that uh, going on. We've been doing webinars. We did a rain barrel one, a compost one, assorted ones, and they're all archived on our website, and more are coming up. Like next Tuesday at noon is one on trees, the importance of trees related to water. Um, so those have all been going on since February and will continue the rest of the year. And then we have a little blog and uh, there will be a business webinar series coming up too for businesses of how they can prevent pollution. But uh, for tonight the theme is native plants. That it's finally getting into garden mode. Here, and she's actually a double duty person, but today um, she's she is a soil. This is Jane Inkland, is a soil and natu natural resource scientist. She serves as Northwoods Land Protection Manager for the West Wisconsin Land Trust, and then she also works as the agricultural and horticultural educator for UW Extension for Doug Douglas County. And her background is in landscape restoration and watershed planning. That was really weird. It was a Chicago suburb. Um, so I'm really excited to follow this Carol's Talk of the Wild Ones with this because it fits perfect with um, the idea of native plants and our native um, systems in this part of the, the world. Um, the yeah. <laughs> so West Wisconsin Land Trust started out. Oh no, I think I bet. Um, is um, an organization that started in West Central Wisconsin. I call it West Central the Menominee area, and it started with the idea of protecting farmland. And it quickly um, was realized that there's more than just farmland to protect, especially when talking about um, native ecosystems. So um, our purpose. It's a nonprofit organization. Our purpose is to work in three eco regions um, in, the, in western Wisconsin, and those would be defined as the Lake Superior Coast, the Northwoods, and the Mississippi River Blufflands. And if you go to our website, you'll see that further defined um, the coastal plain is the South Shore streams that flow into Lake Superior. Um, the Northwoods, we like to focus on um, lakes and um, wild lakes and wild lake shore, and the Mississippi Blufflands. Um, look at the riverways down there, so that those are that kind of defines them even more. But the the most important thing that we do, I think, is is and in this group, I want to make sure you guys all feel like you know what a conservation easement means, because I certainly didn't know what it was when I first started working with them. Um, it's it's a tool that can be used to protect land, and. Um, it's a legal agreement, it's voluntary, and can be used on private land or public land to protect the natural attributes of the land. This is just a picture of um, Paul Scott and Mary Brill who protected their property at the headwaters of the Amnicon. Um, that was on their to-do list. So some of the landscapes that we protect, again, are the lakes, natural areas that can be in any of those three equal regions, of course, and West Wisconsin Land Trust owns about five um, actually owns five natural areas that are open to the public for, for nature study and scientific um, research. And then rivers and streams, this one is one of our beloved ones, the Amnicon River in Douglas County. Tools that are used by land trusts are a gift or a donation of the development rights or the property itself or of um, you know, financial gifts. A bequest, um, estate planning, the conservation easement, which I'll talk a little bit more about. Um, purchase of a conservation easement. Per conservation easements can be donated or the land trust can try to purchase them from a landowner. Uh, a bargain sale where the landowner wants to have the land protected, they can't afford to give it, but they can't afford to, give, to um, sell it at um, the appraised value or less. Um, and then we also keep a registry for landowners that aren't ready to make that decision yet, but they, they have it on their list for the future. So the benefits of a conservation easement are that the preservation desires are achieved. And um, 
we have one gentleman in here that's got a conservation easement, and I know <laughs> that uh, above all else, their family wanted to protect the land. So they started with that premise, um, and they had they had their own reasons to do it, personal and ecological reasons. Um, tax deductions can come with a conservation easement, not property tax deductions. When you put your land under conservation easement, that doesn't mean your property taxes are going to change. They might, um, but every assessor has their own way of figuring that out. But there is an opportunity to get um, income tax deduction on your donation of conservation easement. And it, it can lower your estate taxes because when you put conservation easement on your property, your property is now worth less. So when you, hit, when you pass it off, um, your estate taxes could be lower. The property stays in private ownership, which I think is important. Um, a lot of times people want to protect land as private land. They don't want it to be government protected or publicly protected. And it allows the landowner to, to sell that land um, to whoever they want to in the future. It will still be under conservation easement. Um, the conservation easement is a document, a legal document, that is drafted by the landowner and the land trust, and it's a negotiation between what will that land be used for in the future. Again, primary benefit, though, is protecting the land. I've worked with very many landowners with a huge decision to put it under land protection. A lot of them can't get to that point, but the ones that do, it's always because they want to protect that property. So the issues that are addressed in a typical conservation easement with West Wisconsin Land Trust or most land trusts across the country is that um, residential development is restricted in some way. That doesn't mean we don't have um, projects that have a house on them, or two houses, or a house and a guest, you know, we do have that, but we, we don't have any that have um, multiple dwellings on them. We try to limit subdivision. So if a landowner comes to us, um, we like the idea that they'll never have it chopped up. That doesn't mean that they have 200 acres, they might want to take out a 40, you know, or, or be able to divide it in two someday. But we, we like to limit subdivision. We, we include shoreland buffers so that if there's a water body on the property, um, you know how the county might say you, can, you have to be X feet from the water to build, we usually make it further than that. So, so it's, a, and it's extra set to protect some of those areas. We comment on forest management in that um, if you are going to do harvesting or timber management, you do it under a plan with a certified forester. Um, Agricultural practices, we assume that the landowner is following a conservation plan um, and that they're not making that up as they go for soil erosion control. And we also like to protect ecologically sensitive areas. So if there is a, 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 a wetland on the property or a certain geologic feature, that will usually be mentioned in the conservation easement as an area that will be developed. Are there any questions about that part? So um, again, I'll, I'll start talking about some examples of landowners that have chosen um, to use these conservation easements. And I'll go to the Amnicon River. That's the South Shore Stream in Superior. Um, here's the overhead um, shot. The white area is protected by two landowners that together went in and put their property under conservation easement. This is Superior. There's Highway 13, if you know, going out of going out east um, of town. Uh, and the Amnicon River and some tributaries flow through that area. They were getting anxious because there was development that's going on around them and they realized that they were getting to the point where, whoa, what if, what if we're not here? We don't want ever this fragile soil to be, um, have houses built on it. And so they contacted us. Um, let me see, does this go back? The up arrow already? The up arrow? <laughs> I just wanted to say that right now we're working on a f yeah 400 acre easement adjacent to this parcel too that covers the mouth of the river. So I think it's important to say that when you add pieces together, private land together that's protected, that's even 
for more more um, consistency. Here's a, here's the mouth of the Amnicon River. The uh, the system there, you can imagine, it's got the sand. You got different different plants that are going to grow there, and imagine um, our ability to protect that Lake Superior shore. Mm -hmm. there, there can't be anything more um, special than that. Uh, sometimes I think we take it for granted, but it's pretty cool. And then up onto the clay banks, these, these clay banks are ecologically significant. The property has been um, harvested, like most of ours has, but this property is going to be allowed to return to, um, uh, it's going to try to return to its, its native canopy. Native is a question there, of what will come back, but it's not going to be managed um, for boards and cores, let's say. And there's a bit of boreal um, ecology in this forest. The um, thimbleberry, the understory, is a lot of uh, quasi-boreal plants, and the thimbleberry is one of them, very important for, for um, animals and humans. <laughs> it's very good. Um, just a sea of that out there. And then finally, this is on your property, <laughs> but if you go upstream of that, then you continue to see some of like, the bunch berries that are characteristic of our soils and our climate um, in the north woods. Another example, and this goes to the rainwater, uh, stormwater <laughs> issue a little bit, I think, is that Bluff Creek is a tributary that flows through the city of Superior, and it comes out at the, um, uh, what's that restaurant? Breakwater Restaurant, you know, where there's, I don't, you, you might know, you're riding over that bridge there, that's the Bluff Creek. Well, right north of that, right on the, the city limits, you know, it was a property, a landowners that wanted to protect their property from development um, that was also increasing. The city of Superior at that time had just um, finished one draft of their hazard mitigation plan, and that plan indicated Bluff Creek is one of the creeks um, that caused some issues with um, clay slumping and um, stormwater runoff. So working with the landowner and getting um, support from the city of Superior, we were able to glue together a, a grant application to the Department of Natural Resources um, Knowles and Nelson Stewardship Fund, where they said, we'll pay for 50% of that property, West Wisconsin Land Trust. The landowner said, well, we'll, we'll, um, we'll request half of its value. Yes. So we were able to purchase that. And now it's protected. It's open to the public. You can go there and look at Really, some really nice um, um, species along the Dutchman's breaches, and um, um, some of the yeah, it, it, it's, it's, you see some of these, and you know this too. Some of these plants that don't belong here because of some of these um, micro habitats. So if you want to go on a neat, um, well, not in May, but June wildflower <laughs> ephemeral hike there, there are some really nice plants to see along it. And here's the beautiful chocolate colored. Um, Bluff Creek has it supposed to be in our topography. We like to see it get a little clear, but that's taking the, the clay is from above and bringing them right down to the river mm -hmm. or to the lake. One last example of a conservation easement that was used was um, with the Department of Natural Resources is right over in Bayfield County, south of um, um, Iron River. You know, Delta Diner area like mm -hmm. that. So you know there's a lot of these fancy, wonderful, beautiful lakes that are just pretty subdivided around it. Well, the state has a natural area over there called Inch Lake. The landowner that basically owned all the land around Hilder Lake contacted us. He was living most of his time in Florida. He um, wanted to um, divest of his property, but he never wanted it to be developed. So he contacted us. We worked with him to purchase it, and then we transferred it over to the Department of Natural Resources. Now it's part of the state natural area. And there's some wonderful hiking over there, too. There's a parking lot. You can go look at look, um, spend some time over there. Back to the ecological landscapes that um, were mentioned. Um, this would be like coming over from Minnesota. We got our um, Lake Superior Coastal Plain, the Northwoods, and the Mississippi Blufflands. That's the area that West Wisconsin Land Trust um, does work in. And um, one that you've heard about quite a bit in the news now and is part of our ecology is this Northwest Sand Barrens. Um, why have we heard about it in the news? <laughs> I said, Douglas, yes, <laughs> Douglas County, we're very aware that that's where the fire went through because that's a barren's landscape. And so when you, when you look a little closer at that, oh, and you can probably see it up there, but that dark green is globally um, endangered or I mean, globally significant. That means it's got plenty of endangered species or threatened species or just significant species that are on the edge of, um, they could go one way or the other. <coughs> And that's on a global basis. We've also got some um, Midwest and I think some state, yeah, some state significant. And the fire, um, you would know, went 
went through right here. And aren't we lucky that quite a bit of that is under conservation easement? And it will never be developed. And we can have fires that go through there. That doesn't mean it didn't cause economic harm to a lot of people. Of course it did. Um, but thanks to our governor, we're covered. We don't have to worry about that anymore because it's all protected. Here's an example of the bird sanctuary. This is a barren's habitat, and I was at one of their meetings the other day, and I said, you know, we have a little marketing thing with the barrens because when people hear that, they think barren, you know what? But it is one of the most lively, viable places to go. It's it's some place again to visit, and the, the animal life, the bird life, is um, fantastic there. So um, this isn't in our ecosystem, but it is down on the Gold Prairies, down in the big river areas, and there's no, nothing better than finding a past flower growing under a bur oak um, in April when nothing should be, be growing yet. So um, I'm working with a landowner in the Barrens in Douglas County that's um, donating conservation easement to us and the significance is because it is a Barrens. That's why we're interested in it. Um, little, uh, little blue stem that you mentioned that grows in Douglas County. We don't see it up here as much, but in the sands we do. Shall we, um, Shadowy goldenrod is a threatened and endangered species that is located on one of our easements in a more of a high um, bedrock glade where the bedrock is close to the surface, a drier environment. Um, does anyone know what this is? Do you know this? <laughs> yeah, you know, it looks like it because of the leaves. Um, trailing our boots. Yeah, and that was, uh, that, was, that was blooming a couple weeks ago. What a joy mm -hmm. in one of our easements. In, um, Southern Douglas County. What did I get that trailing? Um, trailing Arbutus. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, the barrens and now the lakes, um, this is again is in the Amnicon watershed at the very top, cedar bog um, that, that is protected. It's got a lot of the um, sundew and um, uh, sundew, <laughs> well, pitcher plant. They've got pitcher plant growing along the bog, and the, the bog um, cranberries, as a matter of fact, he was able to harvest cranberries and he was selling them to the boathouse restaurant in Spear, which no longer is in business, but um, making, making use of our native, our native plants that way. Um, some of the lakes in Douglas County that, again, the, the people come and they like to stay in our county and recreate in, we're so lucky we have landowners that consider protecting some of that shoreline. This is Bond Lake, a very popular lake for jet skis and boating, but these people decided to um, protect this as critically, critical habitat along the shore as um, defined by the Department of Natural Resources that can support some of the ecosystem in the lake. Um, this is a landowner on Whitefish Lake who, um, I, I went, when he first put his land under, he spent the water was, you know, way up here. <laughs> and he's lamenting, my leg, my leg, and his little boy, he's right around <laughs> But now he loves the fact that this lake goes back and forth. It's in a dry cycle mm -hmm. right now. He's got um, cord grass growing, um, sundews are growing on this. This is where the trailing arbutus was. And the jack pines, it's so funny because the ice wedges still come up. And there's all these, like, doing things, and then the plants are all are different between the leaves and other So um, he's come to peace with the fact that the lake does fluctuate. Uh, another one in that bond, whitefish, there's a small little lake, Deborah, on there, and that one grows cord grass between the wedges, too, that is really um, fun to see and find in Douglas County. Finally, a, a lake over in Burnett County. Um, I love the lake, but mostly I love the upland I, because I love those big trees and to find that um, kind of um, topography in the middle of really the tension zone between agriculture and the Northwoods. So this is a lot of farming down here and this is a lot of vacation, say <laughs> farming and vacation land up here. But she had the wherewithal to protect the and the ability to protect the entire lake. She donated that conservation easement to us. And that's a that's a really good cool place to go visit too. That's, that was oh, all about last night. Was mm -hmm. all ferns. Was that a native forest? What kind of forest? Oh, so yeah, there there is some, actually this is all wetland. She's got um, ospreys and eagle nest on this on this land. This is solid ground, and this is where her she's got a one room cabin there, and that's all hardwood that we saw before. So there's. Yeah, there's maple in there, and there's white pine, red pine. Um, it's it's kind of in that middle. Um, no, like no cedar, no none of what we have here. But yeah, it's it's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
Bluebead Lily, one of our, this again is in northern Douglas County. Um, and, and this is on a property, um, he owns a wild lake, and he just, when we go out to monitor, he is, he's just, he's just like a little kid. He's, he loves to show me all the stuff, um, including that. And, uh, and I see these trees on his property, and he's very proud of them. Um, but just think. That, that's going to be there. That's going to be there. It's going to fall down like it's supposed to. But what's a red pine worth like that in, in, um, in, this, in these days when most of our trees have been, um, are on their second or third generation? And there's the wild lake that he protects on his property. But most important, or one of the things that's really important, I mean, I get a kick out of being able to, to work on this. But that's really what we need, and I think Wildlands talks about that too, is to, it's very valuable to have little ones uh, be able to just do that, you know. And maybe, you know, maybe he'll grow up to be an accountant or whatever, but just the fact that he's doing that is really important. Too. So, um, that's good. Except I always promise myself to say one thing that's a big, it's like there is a big disconnect though. And I, I want to explain them. When people make the decision to do, to protect their property, <coughs> they have to spend a lot of money to do it. They have to pay to have it done because there's, beyond their lifetime, someone's <coughs> going over every year to make sure that that's going to be protected. And there will be lawsuits, and there will be encroachment, and there will be reasons that we have to um, spend money to keep it that way. So there's a membership on the back there. And, um, and anyone that wants to talk with me about a um, little more details and logistics, I'd love to talk about. Can I ask just one question? Yeah. The concept of perpetuity, do you mm -hmm. deal with that? Mm -hmm. Could you define that? So um, at 99 years, it's the deed is re, um, what do you call it? Re, um, recorded, re-recorded. And that's, that's part of what we do to make sure that it's Right. And we don't take property um, under conservation easement unless the mineral rights are part of the property. And oftentimes in Douglas County, and I don't remember if you were that right? Did you, you rejoin? We you, have to you, rejoin you, them. You, you right. have our mineral rights. Right. So. We rejoin the mineral rights to the property before they send because that's pretty really important. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Very good news to hear of the, this whole